For the second application of Gauss law, we're going to consider a charged insulating cylinder which will have a cylindrical Gaussian surface. And this problem I'm going to consider for two cases. One when the radius is zero, that is to say we have a line charge, an infinite line with uniform charge density lambda, and A is positive, which is the radius of this um, cylindrical object here, then we will have a volume distribution of charge, a uniform charge density, rho. Okay, so we would like to know the electric field uh, inside the wire R less than A and outside the wire R greater than A. So this is the diameter of our wire here, it's 2A. So we want to know what is the electric field inside. So we have a Gaussian surface here inside with radius less than a and a Gaussian surface outside with radius greater than a. So that's, I'm, that's what I'm going to call Gaussian surface 1 and inside 1 I'm going to call Gaussian surface 2. And for these ones I'm basically considering a, a length L. Okay, so let's consider the first case uh, when we have a is equal to 0. Now, as you can see here, for both of these Gaussian surfaces, the electric field that will point radially outward will be parallel to the dA vector. So when I write the closed surface integral, uh, the flux E dot dA, because the electric field vector and the area vector are parallel to each other, E dA cosine zero will give me magnitude of the electric field, magnitude of dA. And since the electric field is only a function of r here, uh, where r is the radial distance from the center, it's going to be a constant on the surface, uh, on the Gaussian surface, so it, it will come out of the integral as E integral dA. And uh, the total area, the surface area of the cylinder where the electric field will be parallel to the dA vector will be 2 pi r times L. If you consider these two area elements, pi r square, they will be, they will have an area vector perpendicular to electric field and they will have no contribution to the closed surface flux. So we will have E times the total area, surface area, 2 pi r l, uh, excluding the top and bottom, this must be equal to the charge enclosed q in divided by epsilon zero permittivity of free space. Now, when we have a line charge, what is the total amount of a charge inside this Gaussian surface, it will be, because the line will have a length L, uh, line charge density lambda times L will be the charge enclosed divided by epsilon zero. This is for the case A is equal to zero. All right. So that's for the special case when we have a line charge. Then we will find an electric field <coughs> Uh, because the L's will cancel, uh, this L will cancel this L, electric field will be lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 R, which is equal to, if I multiply top and bottom with 2, 2 lambda over 4 pi epsilon 0, that is 2 Coulomb's constant K lambda divided by R. Therefore, we find that the electric field vector for the case R greater than A when A is equal to zero, this is the line charge, is going to be 2K lambda over R in R hat direction. So R hat will be this direction that's pointing radially outward. <clears throat> so this was the case when we have a line charge. 
Now, if I consider Gaussian cylinder, uh, Gaussian surface one, outside a cylindrical charge distribution, that is when we have a greater than zero, uh, e times two pi r l, the closed surface integral will be modified because now for the charge enclosed by the cylinder, I will consider the charge density rho multiplied with uh, pi r square l, the volume of the cylinder, divided by epsilon zero. Uh, this uh, because Gaussian surface one is going to be outside. This will be pi a square times L. So uh, we're considering the total charge enclosed by uh, this part of the uh, wire. So that's pi A square times L. That's the total charge inside this surface uh, multiplied with rho. So this is for the case A is greater than zero. So we find that the electric field is rho a square rho a square divided by 2 epsilon 0 r in r hat direction for r greater than a greater than 0 so we had uh, this pi cancelling this pi here and also the l's disappear Therefore, we are left with rho a square over 2 epsilon 0 r in r hat direction. Now we will consider the second uh, Gaussian surface, Gaussian cylinder 2. Gaussian uh, surface 2. This is now inside the wire. So for the case R less than A, the charge enclosed will be equal to the charge density rho times pi R square L. So we're now considering uh, this cylinder here. And let's say that this cylinder also has the same length L here. So therefore, um, we could basically draw this cylinder uh, from here to here if you wish so this is the cylinder we're considering so it has the same length L so maybe it's better we delete this extension so this is our Gaussian surface uh, 2 that we are considering now uh, the charge enclosed is basically equal to rho times pi r square l. Therefore, electric field times 2 pi r l. Uh, the closed surface integral e dot dA gives us e times 2 pi r l. That is equal to charge enclosed rho times pi r square l divided by epsilon 0 using Gauss law. Now you can see that rl will get rid of one of the r's and l here and we will be left with the electric field inside the wire electric field r less than a is going to be charge density rho r divided by 2 epsilon 0 in r hat direction All right, so uh, if we summarize these two results in a plot of electric field as a function of radial distance from the center, R, you can see that when R is equal to A, we have rho A over 2 epsilon 0 as our electric field. Here, also when R is equal to A, we have rho A over 2 epsilon 0. So these two answers agree. Uh, so that would be the answer when R is equal to A. For R less than A, the electric field drops off uh, 
for r greater than a electric field drops off as 1 over r for r less than a it increases linearly with r so there is a linear increase and a drop off as uh, 1 over r in our final answer okay so what have we done here to summarize we have considered uh, three situations one when we have a line charge density lambda uniform distribution when the radius of the wire a is equal to zero the closed surface integral e dot da is going to be equal to inter closed surface integral e da because electric field and da vectors are parallel and electric field is only a function of r therefore on this surface electric field is a constant so this becomes e times uh, the total surface area integral da e times 2 pi rl now you may wonder what happened to the top and bottom surface areas because the area vectors there would be pointing perpendicular to the electric field they would have no contribution to the closed surface integral so e times 2 pi rl is q in over epsilon 0 the charge enclosed inside is going to be if this is a line lambda times l lambda times l over epsilon 0 uh, is basically equal to the electrical flux this is for the case a is equal to 0 l's cancel we find the electric field for r greater than a when a is equal to 0 to be q2k lambda over r in r hat direction so it drops off as 1 over r if a is non-zero then we have a volume charge distribution for the Gaussian surface 1 outside the wire e times 2 pi rl now becomes equal to the total charge enclosed uh, here which is charge density times pi a square uh, by a square l divided by epsilon zero so this will be uh, basically part of this wire uh, that is inside uh, the cylinder so that's this part of the wire giving us the contribution here uh, and pi and l's cancel so we find electric field is rho a square or 2 epsilon zero r r hat for r greater than a greater than zero so it also drops off as one over r for the gaussian surface two which is inside the wire we have a radius less than a the charge enclosed is charge density rho times pi r square l that's the volume of this uh, cylinder so e times 2 pi r l is rho pi r square l over epsilon zero r l's cancel so we find a linear increase electric field is rho r over 2 epsilon 0 in r hat direction so we can summarize this result as a linear increase inside the wire and a drop off as 1 over r outside the wire